Welcome to Module 30 in this series of lectures on statistical quality assurance and statistical process improvement. We're discussing control charts and in particular control charts for counts or so-called attributes data. In the previous module we discussed p-charts and n-p-charts. In this module we're going to talk about control charts for mean nonconformities per unit uh, which are called U-charts or C-charts. The scenario under discussion is shown in this cartoon down here. The idea is that one has uh, K inspection units. There's a That box indicates one inspection unit, a second inspection unit, a third inspection unit, or K of them in total, and counts up these red X's that are uh, non-conformities found in each one of those units and totals them. Uh, in this kind of a circumstance, if one takes the total non-conformities seen and divides by the uh, number of units inspected, one gets a kind of rate that is a rate of nonconformities per unit. Uh, if one is charting these values u hat that are x over k, one is making a so-called u chart. Uh, if, it, if one is in the special case where there's only one inspection unit at a given period, so k is 1 and that never changes, uh, then that divisor by k doesn't do anything, and u hat is nothing but x, and one might call that a c chart. The probability basis for making control limits uh, in this kind of a circumstance comes from the uh, basic probability concerning a Poisson distribution. That is a reasonable model for that count x is the Poisson distribution with mean that is k times a rate that would apply to a single unit, that is k times a mean number of nonconformities in a single unit, uh, the Poisson distribution with mean k times lambda. Uh, it's a basic fact of Poisson distributions that their standard deviations uh, are the square root of their means. And so in the present case, we'd have a mean for x that's k times lambda and a standard deviation for x that is the square root of k times lambda. And then if one does division by k uh, in those formulas, one has a mean for u hat that is just lambda in a standard deviation for u hat, that is the square root of lambda over k. These uh, form the basis for control chart uh, limits. If one takes, for example, for u hat, a mean minus three standard deviations, one has that mean plus three standard deviations, one has the formula for an upper control limit for u hat. If instead of uh, varying k or k that is other than one, one always has one inspection unit per period, uh, then the special case of this is just the uh, C chart control limits that are lambda minus three square roots of lambda and lambda plus three square roots of lambda. Here's an example using some artificially generated data made using lambda of 2.0. Uh, one could think of these data as being uh, counts or rates. Uh, for a constant number of inspection units, uh, and so we might as well call the number of inspection units one, and so here are the x's that one might work with. 
uh, with lambda equal to 2, k equal to 1, the center line for a, a C chart uh, is at 2. The upper control limit is at 2 plus 3 square roots of 2, which is 6.24. If one tried to compute a lower control limit, uh, one realizes quickly that that difference is negative, and a negative uh, control limit for uh, a count of nonconformities uh, makes no sense, and so we would simply say that there is no lower control limit for x in this particular context. Uh, to extend this example a little bit, one might think of an extra, say, five samples here with k that is not one but varies uh, period to period, so that Sample 21 is based on one and a half inspection units. Sample 25 is based on three inspection units. Uh, with counts like these observed at uh, samples or periods 21 through 25, this corresponding u hat values are obtained by dividing uh, x by the corresponding k. Uh, so 5 divided by 3 is 1.67, and so on. The control limits that are applied to the u hat values in this context vary because k varies. And one should not be terribly surprised that the larger is k, the tighter control limits are about uh, the center value of 2, and in particular, if one looks at, say, sample 25, uh, where three inspection units are encountered, uh, that control limit is far closer to being the uh, standard value of 2 than is, say, 8.0, which comes uh, using a, or presuming that one has inspected half an inspection unit. Uh, here's a plot of uh, u-hat values with corresponding uh, center line and upper control limit. So here's the upper control limits that change at the end uh, as, as k varies. Uh, here's a center line at 2. Uh, jump draws in a lower control limit at zero. I'm not crazy about that because uh, really there is no lower control limit. Uh, it's better practice to not include that red line, but the, the software uh, developers chose to put it in. Uh, and basically that picture shows that there's no clear evidence of process instability or change from lambda equal to two across that period of data collection. One can make uh, retrospective control charts for uh, U-chart data. Uh, what's needed in order to do that is a single value of lambda to use in uh, the standards given limits based on uh, data in hand. A sensible way to get a lambda value from data in hand is to simply total up nonconformities observed and divide by a total of the, uh, the numbers of inspection units uh, at periods 1 through R. So here is total nonconformity at time 1, 2, up to R. Uh, numbers of inspection units at times 1, 2, up to R. If one looks at the uh, example that we've been using here and accounts for the first 20 periods where K was 1 and then the last five periods where K varied, uh, there were 26.75 inspection units represented and the total count of non-conforming uh, across those uh, sampling periods was 53. The ratio of those two numbers is 1.98.
And if one goes back and computes retrospective limits and applies them to the uh, U-hats in hand, uh, there's not really much difference between uh, the standards given chart and what one would get operating completely retrospectively. It's important here as we finish up this discussion of U-charts uh, to uh, appeal or try to help straighten out a confusion that is, uh, is common. Uh, students sometimes have a difficult time deciding whether a particular application calls for a P-chart or for a U-chart. Um, here are the two very different cartoons that go with those two situations. On the left is the uh, p-chart scenario. On the right is the u-chart scenario. On the left side, one has in uh, discrete items or outcomes that are either uh, conforming or non-conforming. Uh, P hat in the left on the left side must be a fraction between zero and one because there are some fraction of those uh, outcomes there those that are that are that are dark as opposed to light uh, on the right hand side it's perfectly possible that as one looks across K inspection units one has more than uh, K different nonconformities observed and therefore a uh, rate a nonconformity rate can be larger than one. Uh, it's worth saying that uh, there are there are tables for uh, all of these control chart formulas uh, at the end of chapter three of Bartman and Job.